Greetings, and welcome to another video. And today, I'm showing you another another survival kit. This one is actually tailored to a specific uh, aspect of survival, scavenging. Now, obviously, when in the when it comes zombie t survival time, yeah, a lot of people are going to either find bases or try to get out of the city. However, that yeah, with these plans, they're going to need to make some regular supply runs. A lot of people say they'll just uh, you know, hunt for hunt or farm for survival, but that take but hunting's inconsistent as and so is things are things like fishing. And farming takes a lot oh quite a while to set up, regardless of what the food is. So, realistically speaking, you're either gonna have to be reliant on the stuff you've stored or go on scavenging missions. And as far as storage goes, I only have about a week's worth of uh, supplies stored. But I am fully capable of going on supply missions. Now, you see, my zombie team, we're designed to where everyone's going to be able to make supply runs. But we're not going to have a spe and so far, we don't have a you know, specifically selected go a yeah, scavenging person. But if you are that person, or are just alone in the apocalypse, you're going to want to have a kit set up specifically for going on runs, because you can't always carry around your survival kit with you everywhere. They're yeah, big, they're heavy, and if you and if you yeah, bring that with you, you won't be able to bring yeah, back many, that many supplies. So, this is my setup for scavenging. Now, first off, let's talk about what I'm you know, going to be wearing. Just kidding. It's the basic stuff I wear, plan to wear for the apocalypse. Hat to cover my hair, bandana, leather waistcoat, leather gloves, my uh, duct tape body armor, and work boots. You, you want... It's light body armor, effective. Yeah, keep will keep me safe. And also, uh, I really don't want to yeah unbury it from its pile, but as also my bomber jacket probably. That combined with say jeans will be more than enough yeah to protect me with what I've got in come zombie time. And as a bon added tip, if you tuck the ends of your pants into your shoes, that'll provide extra protection. Now, on that note, what you're going to want to bring with you for yeah, scavenging missions. First off, you're going to want a bag, separate from your survival kit, yeah, if, it take, if your supplies take up too much space in it. Keep bringing an extra bag, preferably a small one, or medium size, will be preferable, so that you can carry back anything you bring with you. That's kind of a given, though. And then you're gonna want, and then before I go into the actual kit, just some things that'll make your scavenging easier. These three things specifically: mirrors for looking around a mirror, a mirror. This is my signaling mirror, but you can use it for looking around corners. Yeah, you know, when you're uh, searching through a building, just to make absolute sh sure that yeah you won't get jumped, yet yeah, or attacked when you turn it turn around a corner. A screw, an 8-in-1 screwdriver set for various uses, fixing things, but specifically for this, taking doors off their hinges. Yeah, because, you know, or, you know, undoing doorknobs, all those things. Great for breaking into a place. And if it comes necessary, you could use this to break a window. Then we got my lockpick set. Oh wait, look. Basically, you can use this to pick locks. Whether it's a door lock, a padlock, the locks on a car, it's going, it's going to be borderline invaluable. Of course, I wouldn't recommend trying to hotwire a car with these. After all, I learned how to hotwire a car, but uh, you don't need to use these. However, flathead screwdriver and hammer, yes, but 
and maybe wire cutters and electrical tape depending on the type of car but and in for the lock pick set there is i do have an alternative if you either don't know how to pick a lock or don't think you can we'll always have time for it which and as an alternative we got a crowbar now crowbars are a popular ch zombie ch you know weapon of choice but they're also great for you know, opening doors and prying open windows. Really, that's about it, though. It is a decent weapon, but I very much say this is not a good idea to carry if you can, are effective enough to you know, pick a lock fast. Because, yeah, it, you know, it's effective and has the added benefits of being able to open windows, but you could find a lot of things or even improvise things to yeah that can do the same thing as the crowbar and the lockpick set is a few pounds lighter because this is about uh, five or ten pounds I'd say and this a few ounces then of course they're going to be the things you're going to be carrying with you anyway such as Your weapons, like my longbow, backyard armory, link in the description if you want to buy one. My knife, it's a cave arm. Right? My machete, my throwing knives, slingshot. And then they, there are even miscellaneous items that, yeah, that are going to be important, such as binoculars for looking ahead of things, getting a general scout of the land, compass so you don't get lost on your way back to the base or where you're going, flashlights, general thing, and alcohol because. Decent and disinfectant, good painkiller, acts as a blood thinner, and, you know, so, with all of that out of the way, time to show you my, and I broke my flask, I'll fix that later, but without further ado, to get into my survival kit. Now, first off, I have two carabiners connecting two tools on the out to the outside of the kit. We got a hatchet. It works better if you're wearing it when you're trying to take it off. Got a small hatchet. Weighs about weighs less than a pound, so while it's not the best hatchet, I wouldn't recommend this for most things, but it's light and it will get the job done. And it is sharp. And this knife, again, not the best knife I have, but it was the easiest one to fit on the carabiner. Then, time for the rest of the stuff in the kit. First, gonna change the angles that you're getting. Okay, better angle here. Now, I actually forgot to mention this before switching angles, but we also got a canteen. It's aluminum, so it is more than capable of you know, being used for boiling water. Got a canteen cup in there. And the cover is cotton, so can be used as a filtration device, as a filter before boiling water. Then, right here, we got my fishing and trapping kit. If you end up in a tight situation, this can be used you know, used to get more food or setting traps for zombies or other survivors. Got my new flashlight. That it is bright. It's a great flashlight. Honestly though. I 
this is the real set, headlamp. You, all the use of the flashlight without having to you, you know, rely on your hands. And I am actually going to put that on right now and give you guys better light quality. Great. Way better than the one I was wearing. Okay, so. Next, I'm gonna get into the to this part of the kit. First up, got my EDC kit. Water filter, a couple cutting tools, fish emergency trapping kit, whistle, earplugs, fire starter, flashlights, uh, poncho, emergency blanket, pa paracord. Basically, everything I need, and that, I think there's more, so, there is more to that, but this is base. oh, and bugs, great, there is more to that, but it's basically, I could take this kit right here, survive with just this and this alone, and got my first aid kit. Now, some of you might say I should, I should either not carry this or carry a smaller version, well, this is the only one I got, and, uh, well, it's got everything I need. Got get decent medications, stuff to handle serious injuries or small ones. And, well, first aid's important. Now for the big container. I mean, the, you know what I mean. First off, my new emergency tent. Basically, it's made of my, the same stuff as Mylar blankets, but it's a tent. It comes with about 20 feet of paracord, so you can set this up anywhere. Basically, it's easier to set up than an actual tent, and, well, that's really about it. It's an emergency shelter, and it works great. Got my mess kit. It's a mess kit, basically. It's got bowl, pot, lid and a frying pan, but I added stuff to it, like this flameless ration heater from an MRE. But most of the stuff I added is in the pot. It, most of it's been shown in videos before, but uh, got it later. Swiss Army knife. Ziploc bag of hot chocolate mix. Couple package of drink mix. My homemade waterproof containers of salt and sugar. Also Again, I sell these at the Backyard Armory. Just ask for them. Got a military can opener. A collapsible cup. And, again, the pot. Then, after that, got my fire kit. Got a fire steel lighter pencil sharpener for gathering yeah, fire starters. Matches, stormproof matches, block of magnesium, fire cube, basically everything we would you need. Basically, a pretty decent fire kit that I actually put together with some pretty cheap stuff. It's honestly a great fire kit for now, for, for what I'm capable of making, but it's also compact, so I kept it. Got my hygiene kit. Basically, it's compact. It's got soap, toothpaste, lotion, floss, toothbrush, and a comb. Everything I need to stay high, you know, stay hygienic in the apocalypse. And we got a knife. Now you might be saying, "Do it? Don't you have too many knives?" To which I say, "Maybe." But, you need a reliable fixed blade knife. The other one, just something that has quick access. This, it's a gr probably my second best knife. And honestly, actually it might be tied for first. But, this, it's a great knife. It's reliable. And, well, you need that for your kit, regardless of what kind of survival kit it is. Then... Got a tarp. 
an emergency shelter item, but it can be used for various things. I kept this in here because I had the extra space, but you could easily get rid of this and either replace it with something else, or, you know, just extra space in the bag for supplies. If you want to keep your supplies in this bag instead of having a second, having another bag. Either way is good, but I just had wanted to keep a backup shelter item or whatever you're using this for because, you know, scavenging missions are the most dangerous, especially when you're you know, sending one person. Then, this is my food supply. I'll show you guys real quick, but I really don't like taking this out because it's in pot. Really a major pain to put it back in. Got a Ziploc bag of some candies. Three Ziploc bags of oat of oatmeal, plain. This stuff has a few lasts a few years, but it's actually going to expire soon. Thinking about replacing it with something like rice. Got a jar of peanut butter. This is right here is a day's worth of food. Eh, looks like the expiration date's actually coming up. How is it? I bought these things months apart. How is it all expiring soon? This I know isn't expiring soon though. Got an MRE. Not gonna expire for a few decades, but, I, but, well, that's about it. So, everyone, this is my. So, everyone, this has been the scavenging survival kit. Well, scavenging kit, honestly, whatever you want to call it. You see, the main reason I made this is because in shows like The Walking Dead and Z Nation, they show scavenging missions, but they honestly just show them carrying weapons and a bag without actually bringing any yeah, real gear with them. Honestly, though, if a scavenging mission goes south and you're stuck somewhere for a while, you're going to want to have stuff with you. Say you're stuck in a building for a few days, having a way of uh, cooking, having a few days worth of food, water and you know a way of cooking that food going to save your life and say your base is destroyed and you don't have to go with what supplies you have on you this kit will save your life and of course there are certain things that can be taken out like the fishing and trapping kit or that tarp that I put in for as a backup uh, you know, shelter option or even the first aid kit, just get a smaller one. And the hygiene kit, that's honestly more of a luxury item. Honestly, a lot of these things can be taken out and replaced with the other things. But I think I got a pretty decent scavenging kit here. So, with the, on that note, tell me what you think about this kit in the comment section. Give me, give me some topics in the comment section that you might want to see too. Oh, remember to yeah subscribe and hit the be yeah bell icon, like this video, all that stuff. And for all my recurring viewers, my 100 subscriber challenge, uh, which I'm finally doing, even though I'm at 200 subscribers now, thank you all for that, is going to be happening later this week, if not tomorrow. Thank you all for watching. This is Random Man, signing off.